Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today we have Aijan here with us. We're still working on these three camera <laughs> lessons. We have the Blackmagic <laughs> Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Versus the Amira. Really? <laughs> really. <laughs> Here's my thinking. Stay with me on this. <laughs> Whenever I shoot on set and someone says, oh, can we get a steady cam shot? I'm like, great, yeah, sure. Do you have $1,100? Um, to hire a steady cam. To hire a steady cam guy, yeah, because you can't float this on a gimbal or anything. No, I can't hardly hold this. <laughs> so I kind of wonder how well would a camera like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera cut with my Amira if I need to pull off the occasional one -er or steady cam shot or whatever, could I just throw this on a gimbal and get it real fast and make it match okay at least. Okay, so today's lesson is, does the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K make a good B-roll camera to the Amira? So let's get started, see what we can do. So here's our image quality test between the Amira and the Pocket Camera 4K. Honestly, this looks very similar to me as the Ursa Mini Pro did in comparison. I feel like the image looks very much the same. The greens have that brownish hue to them a little bit. Obviously, depth of field is kind of different. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I'm seeing a lot of the same things. Your question on this was, could you take these two and could you use this as a B camera for your uh, Amira? And what do you think? I think you really could, because the skin tone, I'm pretty sure you could get to look. I mean, it all it already looks very similar, looks and I didn't even similar. mess with it that much. So I think you could really dial these in to look very similar, though you probably won't ever get the same sort of rich colors from the pocket that you will from, from the uh, Airy. Well, but, you're just not dealing with as much information, for one. I mean, that's just yeah. the bottom line. But you could totally cut these. Based on this image, at least, I think you could totally cut these together. I think you could. We want to do a mixed lighting test. I think the mixed lighting tells you a lot about the way that cameras respond to color and tonality. So in this, we have a warm key light kind of overhead and then some cool light in the background. And I tried to get these to match as closely as I could without going crazy. And I, they did kind of end you up pretty close. did a really good job. Yeah. I'm looking at the <laughs> color of the stuff, the doorway, the, the window on the left. You see the corner of the cabinet there. It's got a little more of a greenish blue. Uh, I think they match pretty dang good. So if you blow this up, quality-wise, if you enlarge this, how do they compare? Because you got a Micro Four Thirds versus a Super 35. I mean, are they gonna... Uh, I don't know, actually. It seems kind of like the same amount of noise if you look in the shadows over her shoulder, you know, back by the mixer and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so as far as those two cutting together, or, I mean, really, you can talk about cutting them together. You can also talk about, you know, could you shoot a feature on your... On your pocket cam? your pocket. Yeah. Cinema it, camera 4K. I think both those last two images, the image quality and the mixed lighting, I think they both looked really nice on the pocket cam. I was super impressed. I mean, it's a $1,200 camera. It's pretty amazing how good that looked, how closely you could match the Amira just uh, based on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We want to do a dynamic range test like we normally do where we over and underexpose the footage and then kind of correct it. And this is properly exposed according to the meter. And they look really similar, seem to be holding kind of, eh, kind of the same amount of dynamic range. The concrete seems to be, I don't know, they both look similar. The shadows similar. are a little yeah. darker, a little be behind her on the pocket mm, camera. Yeah, that's Just true. a little bit. I think it's a little deeper, but not... I mean, it's definitely deeper. It's like a half a stop. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like it, the information is totally lost on mm -hmm. any of that. Plus one stops. The Amira really likes to be overexposed. So it's not going to have any problem with this kind of stuff as we saw last time we tested this with the Ursa Mini Pro. Um, the pocket also seems to be doing kind of the same. The image looks basically the same as it did before at proper exposure. Plus two stops. The Amira should have no problem with this. Mm -mm. The pocket camera is still also doing really well. Like the highlights behind her is still, you know, you still it's, see some detail in that concrete. It really is holding pretty well. It's holding almost as well as the Amira. Yeah, the, well, uh, it definitely the is. But pocket camera's image, it seems like the grid is a little bit more contrasty than the Amira's is. It does. Plus three stops, the concrete is clipping on the Amira. Yep. Uh, it's starting to clip on the pocket camera too. Honestly, like, <laughs> it looks kind of the same. It looks <laughs> very much the same. Look at the grass on the right-hand side out in that sun. Yeah. It's becoming a little brighter with the pocket camera. And not as much color information yep, happening there. Yeah, we're starting to lose that color losing information. that color, yeah. But not bad, wow. Really not bad. I feel like the pocket camera is actually kind of doing better than the uh, 
the Ursa Mini Pro Day. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so plus four, the Ursa or the. Uh, that is incredible. <laughs> still holding that detail in the pocket camera. Plus with the four. Well, the Amira looks fabulous still. I mean, it's obviously clipping in that yeah. sidewalk on the side there, but you know, when we were at plus four on some of those other cameras, weren't it was just falling apart. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. I, I'm just shocked at how well the pocket camera is uh, holding up. I mean, when we go to five stops, you see some green in the uh, grass, but now, now the Blackmagic pocket uh, camera, cinema camera 4K has fallen off the cliff. Yeah, 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 definitely. Although not as much as the Ursa Mini Pro G2. I mean, on that uh, one, we... I don't know. Well, look at oh, the... Oh, it's Ursa, yeah, the G2, yeah. The G2, there's like no detail in those bushes in the background. It's like an L of, of yeah, white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pocket's still holding on to some stuff. It is. Obviously not outperforming the Amira, but it's coming in a close second. Yeah, it's close yeah. second of the four cameras we've looked at. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty amazing. Let's move to the underexposure test now. Okay, so now I would have to guess, in the scheme of things, that it's not going to like to be underexposed. Yeah, just judging by the way it responds to overexposure, you have to pay the price you somewhere. Got it somewhere. <laughs> you, know, you can't have it on both ends. Yeah, underexposed, I mean, right away... I feel like underexposed is not as nice. Look at the wall on the left. You can yes. see noise. Look at the black in the back, the mm -hmm. trees. I'm just seeing a lot Inner, of dancing going on. Her face is kind of going all blotchy yep. on us. Uh, the Amir, of course, looks beautiful. <laughs> the Amir, of course, looks beautiful. <laughs> Minus two stops. Amir still holding OK, though you're starting to lose a lot of the shadow. When you're getting a little bit of, uh, of grain inside of her face on the Amira. The pocket, though, just like really having a hard time with the underexposure. Yeah, look at this. All over in the shadows now. We have... Yeah. Uh, in the red dress is really alive. Yeah, very much so. And the bushes down here, you see fixed pattern noise yep. happening. Yep. Then go to minus three stops. Amira doesn't like minus three stops. <laughs> Pocket camera. <laughs> really Holy doesn't God, like really it. Really does not like oh, it. Oh my word, it looks like <laughs> TVs I used to watch back in the 60s. <laughs> really bad. Crazy red noise everywhere. Well, that makes sense because yeah. we were seeing it on the other end and it was very mm -hmm. strong, which means you're, you're going to pay the price somewhere. But underexposing, I don't know. I struggle with this one. Really, I'd rather have a <laughs> look, at, look at minus. <laughs> that's minus four. Minus four yeah. stops, yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> really bad. And you in the background. <laughs> and you in the background, looking really bad. Yeah. Well, the mirror's not looking great either. <laughs> no, not great. But not as bad as the... Uh, the pocket camera. Now we're going to take a look at the ISO test and just look and see where these perform. They both should have a native ISO of 800, right? Yes, they do. All right, so do. we're going to look at, we'll start at 400 and move up from there and just see how they compare to each other. Um, 400, obviously super clean because we're like below native. Both these sensors perform, you know, really well at this ISO. Uh-huh. Then we'll move up to 800. Looking really nice. You do see a little bit of grain, which is kind of, you know, just normal for an image. And it seems to be kind of equal on both cameras. I'm looking at the purple chip here because that seems to be the most obvious one. Moving to 1600 ISO. This is where I would start. I would imagine we start to see differences between you the two. You don't like the Amira uh, uh, above 1600. Do I you don't, shoot 1600 on it often? I, I do shoot 1600 sometimes. I try not to shoot above 1280, but 1600 is totally usable. Mm -hmm. uh, on the pocket camera, I would say the pocket camera looks at least as good. Yeah, it does to me. I'm not yeah, seeing anything. Not really seeing much. No, no digital noise. I'm not seeing it. In the purple, do you see it there? A little bit in the blue. I mean, it's it's it's. Boy, it's There's negligible though. Yeah. Amira, 3200 ISO, definitely a lot noisier. You kind of see it all over the image now, and all the color chips, background, even our scanner and the shadowy parts. Definitely the shadow, part, shadow parts, yeah. So we did say earlier that the 800 was a native ISO for the pocket camera, 4K uh, cinema camera, but it's not true. It's like 400 yeah, ISO. Yeah, that's right. It is 400. And it has dual, dual ISO 3200, which we see here. The Amir is pretty noisy at 3200, you especially see it in this sort of indigo chip here mm -hmm. on the chart. The pocket camera, also still fairly noisy at 3200. I would say maybe a little less so, because I don't see it as much in her face. And that is as high as the Amir goes. The pocket camera, though, goes to, goes to 6400 ISO. Pretty noisy, but maybe you could use it. So there you have it, our ISO test between the David and Goliath, or Goliath and David, whichever one it is. <laughs> But really the test was about would this camera work as a great B camera for the Amira? Because I don't yeah. think you're going to be deciding 
on which one of these two cameras you get because one, there's not a, it's not a, a dock style great onboard sound, no, you know, no. all those kinds of things. It's, the pocket camera is really a very s slimmed down version of cinema camera that a person who's in college or small productions or you know right. are going to use. I was very impressed. I mean, un the underexposure test it failed miserably, but everything else, I thought it kind of knocked it out of the park for the price point. I mean, I was just so amazed. Yeah, really. How well it did. But the downside is it's not, it's hard to rig it. You kind of have to have a cage and then rods and the battery on the back and it, it becomes all very cumbersome. And then, you know, do you get an EVF? Do you get a, a monitor? The, and the other issue too is the EVF. I wish there was some sort of little built in EVF like Just anything. Because you know, anything, that screen on the back is nice enough, but not when you're outside. You can't hardly use it. So. Uh, one cool thing is the media, I mean, you, you can use CFast cards or SD cards or whatever, but a really cheap way to run it is to use SSDs that you can get for very cheap. Yeah, I mean, you can get a one terabyte SSD that's going to last you hundreds of minutes. And, and that's a very, that's a big bonus when a CFast card costs $300, $500. Absolutely. So. And there's companies out there like Tilta yeah. that have got rigs that have the place for the SSD card yeah. to go, so it yeah. rigs to it. So uh, let us know what you think. Let us know what your experience is with that camera or if you're interested in buying one now, um, what you thought of our tests. Let us know if there are any things that you want us to test or compare. We are kind of looking for new things to try and yeah, we'd like to hear from you. Absolutely, and if you're gonna purchase one of these cameras, make sure you do it through our affiliate program. Uh, check that out in the links below. It'll take you to a place where you can purchase it and it helps support the Slant Lens. Uh, we hope you're finding great value in these. We want to be able to bring you information that helps you make the decisions that you need to make to be a great filmmaker in the world uh, with all the challenges and gear issues that there are out there today. So make sure you subscribe, follow us, like us, all those kinds of things. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.